During this video, let's not forget that the DJI Pocket 2 is now nearly three years old. Can you believe it? But I'm doing this comparison because I'm being asked how it compares to the DJI Osmo Action 4 when it comes to vlogging. So this comparison is purely based on vlogging alone. In terms of the price, the Osmo Action 4 costs more than the DJI Pocket 2 just for the cameras. But when you look at the adventure combo for the Action 4 versus the creator combo for the Pocket 2, they both come in at the same price of $499. But given what you get in that adventure combo, coupled with the quality from the camera, I think you're getting the better deal with the Osmo Action 4. The Action 4 has a larger sensor than the Pocket 2, but the Pocket 2 still does a great job in terms of the overall video quality against the Action 4. However, the dynamic range, not so much. The Action 4 completely wins here, no question. And remember the Pocket 2 is nearly three years old, so I kind of expected this to be the case. Even when you film in the HDR mode on the Pocket 2, which is capped at 2.7K, it's just lacking on so many levels, regardless of whether you compare it to the Action 4 or not. But the Action 4 is optimised to have exceptional dynamic range without the need for a dedicated HDR setting and it really does an awesome job. So this is just a really quick audio test with both of the cameras. So this is the Osmo Action 4 audio and then this is the DJI Pocket 2 audio. So neither of them have external mics attached, this is just the microphones that are coming from the cameras themselves and you can attach external microphones so with the Pocket 2 and the Creator combo if you when you use the do it all handle you can attach a microphone via the 3.5 millimeter port on the do it all handle and then with the Action 4 you could just use a USB-C mic like the DJI wireless mics for example with the do it all handle though you obviously get the wireless transmitter that comes with it which if you want to hear what that sounds like, I've got loads of videos on the Pocket 2 where I've used that and I've shown you that I'm using it, so you can go and check that out. And also with the Osmo Action 4, if you want to hear what the DJI wireless mic sounds like, then I've got other videos, or at least a review video, where I've used that, and so you can hear what that sounds like as well. But yeah, this is just to give you an idea of how the audio sounds for both of the cameras. One of the settings that the Action 4 has that the Pocket 2 doesn't have is sharpness. But even though the Pocket 2 doesn't have this feature, it already does an amazing job of just making the footage look clear and crisp without going over the top on sharpness or needing to adjust anything in the camera. The Action 4 has a noise reduction feature too, and whilst the Pocket 2 doesn't have this as such, it does have a battery saver mode and a high quality mode, which when the high quality mode is enabled, it basically engages some kind of noise reduction. I've done a separate video about this, so I won't go into detail in this video, but when it comes to low light, they both do well in different scenarios and different ways. In most cases though, you'll see that the Pocket 2 does way better, and this is down to the wider maximum aperture of f1.8 versus the f F2.8 on the Action 4, especially when the low light image enhancement isn't on in the Action 4. But then in a different light, the Action 4 looks better, especially when the low light image enhancement is engaged. So I really think it just comes down to personal preference, but if all I had was the Action 4, the low light footage that comes from it isn't so awful that I'd want to throw the footage away, even though the footage isn't as stable compared to the Pocket 2 because it's competing with the Pocket 2's gimbal. So when it comes to colours, just like the Action 4 does better with dynamic range, it also delivers colours a lot better than the Pocket 2, whether you shoot in the normal colour profile or their respective flat colour profiles, d Light for the Pocket 2 and D-Log M for the Action 4. But with the Action 4 and D-Log M, that's likely down to the fact that you're shooting in 10-bit colour and the Pocket 2 doesn't have this. And whichever camera you have or thinking of getting, I've created some conversion LUTs to make it easy and quick to go from the flat looking footage to footage that looks normal and usable. You just choose which LUT you want to use, drop it over your footage and it converts it straight away for you. And there are also enhanced that's included too so if you want the sky to be a bit bluer or the foliage to be a bit more vibrant then you can put those LUTs on the footage as well and they won't disturb the other colours in the scene. So I've dropped a link in the description so that you can check the LUTs out in more detail but when it comes to the Pocket 2 when you shoot in the normal colour profile it has a tendency to overexpose the footage so you have to drop your EV meter value when shooting in auto exposure to get better looking footage whereas with the Action 4 you don't have to do that you could be shooting in normal with the EV meter sitting at zero and the footage looks great. As for the field of view, the Osmo Action 4 has a wider field of view just on its standard D warp setting. With the Pocket 2, it's not quite as wide as I'd like for vlogging, so if you want it wider, you'd have to attach the wide angle lens. But even then, it still doesn't feel as wide as the Action 4. So I thought I'd just give you a little comparison based on the widest that Osmo Action 4 can go in terms of its field of view, because I've got the uh, ultra wide angle lens on the Pocket 2 so this is as wide as the Pocket 2 can go so you can see that there's just so much more that you can get in the frame with the Osmo Action 4. 
When comparing both cameras from a usability perspective, there's a clear winner for three reasons. Screen size, waterproofing, batteries. The Action 4 has two touchscreens, a rear and a front. And while the front touchscreen isn't huge, it is bigger than the Pocket 2 screen. And what's more, the Pocket 2 isn't waterproof or even weather resistant. So if you got caught in the rain or it was snowing, you completely have to stop filming. Whereas with the Action 4, you wouldn't have that limitation. And with the Action 4, you get removable batteries so you can film all day without having to worry about the camera dying and then having to recharge it. You can simply swap the batteries and get back to filming. So for me, if I had neither camera, I'd probably be more inclined to go for the Action 4 if filming in low light wasn't something that I did often. But if I knew I was gonna film indoors or film a lot in low light settings, then I'd be more likely to reach for the Pocket 2. But as a general outdoor camera for vlogging, I'd have to say the Action 4. But let's see what the Pocket 3 brings if there is one, because I am really, really looking forward to that camera as I'm sure a lot of you are as well.